Hello, and welcome to the how-to series presented by Fresh Service, your guide to best practices for ITSM and ITOM. I'm Berkeley Vogelheim, and I'm here to share with you how to build out your orchestration center with Fresh Service. While every organization is different, most modern IT organizations face a similar set of issues. They're constantly tasked with dealing with very large and expanding application stacks of a number of cloud applications across multiple teams. Teams like HR, finance, DevOps, development, all use their own set of applications, yet these somehow all need to talk to each other. Similarly, in the age of agility, IT organizations have to move very quickly. They're commonly tasked with building out complex processes and automations in a very short amount of time as organizations grow quickly. As organizations scale, IT teams face the following challenges. Their employee base continuously expects fast and reliable service, and even as processes become more complex, most employees expect immediate remediation of issues for most of their problems. Now, this seems simple, but the problem is that building automations across multiple different applications can be really challenging. It usually requires companies to invest tons of time and money in complicated middleware, middleware custom applications, integrations, and while these things often work, they're not really scalable and often take a lot of time and resources to build out. So in comes the Fresh Service Orchestration Center. Now, the core value piece of the Orchestration Center is going to enable organizations to actually build out very quick, very powerful automations across multiple different systems within the Fresh Service Workflow tool. Fresh Service seeks to help organizations transform from what we call a human-driven service management environment to an automated service-driven environment. So today, we're going to be going over a couple actual examples of where the Orchestration Center fits in. Um, now, again, these are just a handful of examples. The options for this are really endless, and we actually allow organizations to even build out um, their own orchestration processes and integrate with them within Fresh Service's environment as needed. The first workflow we're going to be going over is a thorn in the side of many IT organizations, which are password resets. Um, across almost every fresh service IT service desk customer, uh, this is the most common issue they face. How do our employees reset their password? It's very common. Um, now, it doesn't take agents a super long time to manually reset passwords. However, what we seek to do with Fresh Service Orchestration Center is turn this from a, a quick manual process to an even quicker, fully automated, touchless process so that agents never actually even have to get involved when a user requests a password reset. Um, Fresh Service can actually handle this on its own. So let's take a quick look at how this works. I'm going to be playing the role here of just an employee at an organization. Let's say I had to reset or maybe I forgot my SSO password for Azure and I don't really know how to get that reset or how to get that fixed. Um, now, in the old days, I might put in an incident ticket, uh, wait for an agent to reply, and maybe send me a password reset. But now, I can just actually do a really quick search, pull up a password reset request in our uh, service catalog, fill in which application I need reset, and place the request. Now, again, once I actually submit this request, instead of this being a process that gets assigned to an agent or technician to handle, this is going to be automatically fulfilled in the back end of Fresh Service. Before I confirm here, let's actually switch over to our workflow tool and talk about how we would actually build and implement this process. Now, taking a quick look at the Fresh Service workflow automator here, um, we're actually going to be building out live this password reset process uh, within the Fresh Service environment. So I have a very basic workflow set up here. Um, we're going to be triggering this workflow on a ticket being raised. And then we're going to be checking the condition on uh, if the requested item is a password reset. So we're going to trigger this workflow on a password reset being requested. Now, the next thing we're going to do here, instead of just pulling in an action and having to trigger a webhook or having to maybe des design or trigger a custom application to do this, we're going to just be able to really quickly pull in an app block. And in this case, we're going to be designing a password reset in our Azure environment. I have all of my out-of-the-box commands available here. And all I'm going to do here is do a password reset. It's going to ask me for some information needed from Azure. Um, I can either pull this information from placeholders in our fresh service um, in our fresh service request that comes in. So if there's certain information we need the end user to fill in, and then we use that, we can do that here. Um, in this case, just for testing, I'm just going to put in some example.
and then we're good to go. I'm able to test this app action live um, or just turn this on and activate this workflow. So again, building out these types of processes is really as easy as that. Um, it's very easy to change and update them over time or again, integrate multiple other systems. I used Azure there, but we can do things like Okta or even other applications for password resets. Now let's jump back into our end user view really quick just to see what this will look like for your employees. Um, so again, back on the self-service portal, putting in a service request for a password reset. I'll go ahead and confirm this. And again, the second I actually put this request in, all the information is updated. Um, the system has the ability to leave a note letting us know our password was reset. So check the email link um, for the reset link. Um, and again, this is actually gonna be closed out immediately. I'm able to leave a note and reopen it obviously if something went wrong, but this action is able to be completed without any agent intervention. Another common use case for the Fresh Service Orchestrator is allowing your organization to swarm critical events and do major incident alerting through your existing enterprise collaboration tools, such as Slack or Microsoft Teams. Essentially, what this will do will allow you to trigger certain events within Fresh Service, such as a major incident getting raised or a critical event going off, and using that to actually trigger a channel getting created or a message or notification being posted within an organization's collaboration tool. We've actually done a Bright Talk video on this previously, where we showed a major incident alerting a team through Slack that that was going on. Um, so I encourage everyone to go check that video out to see it in action. Today, I'm just going to be building a simple workflow uh, to alert a team within their Microsoft Teams environment that there's a major incident um, being marked as urgent. So if I switch over to our workflow tool, I again have a simple triggering event identifying that the priority on an issue has been changed from any priority to the urgent priority. Now, if this happens, we essentially want to alert our incident team within Microsoft Teams so they can get alerted and collaborate within that space there. So I'll grab my app node here, point to Microsoft Teams, and we can see the various options we have here, whether it's updating a team or channel, adding new members to a team, or simply just posting a message as we will do here. So again, I can you know, do the post message command, put in the channel URL and the text, and then run the test as needed. And then whenever a priority is changed to urgent, we'll actually be posting to this specific channel, alerting that team of what's going on. Another common use case where organizations are starting to leverage our orchestration capabilities is for onboarding new employees, provisioning their accounts, and creating their user profiles in their IDP. Now we did another Bright Talk series on more broad employee onboarding use cases and all the various tasks and workflows associated with it. But today we're gonna to focus pretty exclusively on the user provisioning piece. So let's say we're building a workflow for a new employee onboarding. Uh, in this case, I have a very simple workflow set up. So we're gonna check for a service request being raised. And then we're gonna confirm this is a new employee onboarding request. Um, now again, I can really quickly drag and drop an app node in. And this time I can tie into my Azure AD node. Now again, we have orchestration capabilities for both Cloud Azure, On-Prem Azure, uh, and other IDPs like Okta and OneLogin. Uh, we have a number of different actions we can take, and typically as part of an employee onboarding process, we might be taking multiple of these actions in one go. Uh, for example, uh, updating the user group, um, giving them certain application provisions, that sort of thing. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna execute a create user command, um, and we're gonna have the payload available here. So again, I'm just gonna fill in some information, Um, we'll again leverage our information from our ticket to do this. Um, for now, I'm just gonna put test information in here. This is an example. And again, we have all of our other options. Now, in this case for our creating user, we're actually gonna be pulling from any custom attributes we require in our Azure AD environment as well. So if you have any custom attributes there, you can access them here. And then again, either hard code them in um, or leverage the placeholders to add those. Now, once we have all the information, we can actually test the user action and get our response code here. Now, if we switch over to our Azure portal, uh, we can see right here that this new user has been created uh, based on our test. And all the information uh, is correct associated again with those fields that we have set up in our Azure environment. So up to this point, we've gone over very common uh, IT service desk use cases. Um, we've automated some simple processes such as password resets. We've handled more complicated issues 
um, such as employee onboarding. And we've also um, helped our collaboration by, you know, alerting people for major incidents and things like that. Um, the last broad bucket of orchestration capabilities Fresh Service includes uh, really has to do with DevOps and infrastructure management. Um, Fresh Service has a number of orchestration nodes with tools such as Azure Cloud, um, GCP, and AWS to basically enable an, or an organization to control a lot of their provisioning and management of their cloud resources. Um, now, the use cases of this, again, are, are pretty broad, but today we're going to be focusing on an auto-provisioning use case in AWS um, for, again, a very simple uh, resource within that system. Switching over to our workflow here, uh, again, this is a really simple, we're checking for a service request being raised, confirming this is an AWS account request. Um, and in our case, if someone is requesting a T1 resource uh, from this is, you know, a T1 is a type of resource in AWS EC2. Um, if someone's requesting a T1 resource, it's not going to require any approval. We can just auto provision this. Um, however, if it is a more cost heavy resource uh, above an A1, um, we're going to require some approval. Now, I already have this built out, so I'm just going to open up this run instance um, AWS node to see what this involves. Now, just like the other orchestration instances, uh, we have a set of configuration fields. Um, I've already filled in some of the things like instance name, the image ID that we're gonna be calling to run, um, as well as the region. So again, a number of other fields here I could fill in either manually or with placeholders as needed, um, but those are the ones I have now. Uh, now, instead of just testing this, I'm actually going to run this from our self-service portal. Uh, so again, let's say I'm a DevOps, um, you know, someone on our DevOps team or maybe a development engineer, and I need some sort of AWS resource for a project I'm working on. I'll come into the service catalog under account services and request an AWS account. Again, fill in the standard information we need here. Dev. Uh, and again, we'll place the request and this will get automatically provisioned. So the second I created this, um, request, it was instantly resolved. This resource was created and assigned to me. Um, and if I go into our AWS uh, management portal here, I can actually see that this instance has um, already started running um, the correct type of instance, all the information we need. So right away, the, the productivity of an agent um, not having to get involved for this type of request, not having to go into their you know AWS portal or Azure portal and provision these types of things, um, and just essentially allowing your development team to work really quickly and get the resources they need right away. Um, now this capability we showed for AWS, but this also extends to things like GCP and Azure Cloud. Now as organizations start to scale uh, with their orchestration capabilities, building out more workflows with multiple systems, and these get more and more complicated, um, they'll need the ability to troubleshoot and track everything that's going on in their environment. Um, we have multiple orchestration actions being triggered in multiple systems. We want to understand if there's any failures and why those are happening, system outages, um, things that are completed, but maybe some data inconsistencies. Essentially, we want to give admins the ability to track all this information to help them troubleshoot and optimize processes. So in the workflow tool, I can go under execution logs, and this is going to allow me as an admin to track every single orchestration transaction. Uh, which workflow it came from, when it happened, what the source was, and then the status of that execution. So if I look here, I can see if there were any failures, why those things happened, uh, if any actions were completed, but they had some errors, what those errors were. And I'm really able to really able to kind of drill down into these as well as filter them by different statuses. So the, you know, the point of this is really to give admins the ability to understand if anything's going wrong and fix those things quickly. Lastly, once you've built out a number of orchestration processes, optimized a number of different systems, um, you know, rapidly fulfilled requests and done all this really amazing stuff within the orchestration center, we want to give admins the ability to report on all this information. So in our analytics, we give you the opportunity to report on a number of different aspects of your orchestration and workflow environment. Um, these are just a few examples. So, you know, again, just looking at a histogram of when a number of orchestration metrics are being executed. Um, our average time saved for, you know, various workflows being executed. Um, and then the ability to track day over day the amount of time our team is saving. Um, so we can definitely see broken down by the different orchestrations we have set up, which are being executed and which are saving the most time um, per day. So again, really giving uh, admins the ability not just to build out and optimize processes, but 
um, you know, prove out and show the ROI they're getting uh, on that orchestration. So just to recap some of the impacts of the orchestration features on an average service desk environment, um, really the, goal, the core goal here is in service delivery. So we want to be reducing the average request handle time, allowing teams to basically automate as much as possible, even when there are multiple systems involved in the fulfillment of a specific service. Um, by doing this, you know, another huge impact is we're going to be reducing the amount of manual work your technicians and agents have to do. Uh, agents typically do not get fulfillment off of, you know, manual data entry or receiving a request only to just hop into another system and click a few buttons. So we want to automate that as much as possible and let your agents and technicians spend time actually solving more complicated issues and working on more impactful projects. Um, the real big part of the way we've built this orchestration center too is that we don't want this, you know, costly, complicated barrier of entry. We want every organization to be able to, to use these advanced features. Um, so we built this in a way to eliminate the need for, you know, a huge investment in, in complicated middle, middleware development. Um, really any team using fresh service and, and have an understanding of the workflow automator um, can build these things out, you know, constantly optimize them and update them over time without any massive cost involved. Um, and, and again, the end result of all of this is, is employee satisfaction. We're delivering services more quickly. We're removing unnecessary complication and code from, from your environment. Um, and we're reducing the need for your agents to have to spend time doing things they don't want to do. The orchestration center is available for all fresh service customers. So every single plan has the workflow tool enabled. Um, and every single plan has the orchestration center enabled. So we encourage existing customers, whatever plan you're on, um, you know, go in, feel free to open up the apps, connect them to your existing systems, and start seeing what's possible. Um, the, the full breadth of all the capabilities go far beyond what we had the time to show today. Um, and for any non-fresh service customers, feel free to go sign up for a trial. It's free, 21 days. Um, you can connect these again to your live systems or to other trial environments for testing. Um, let us know if you have any questions on common use cases or where we've seen success. And thanks everyone again for the attendance. Um, we'll be on the line for, for questions here for the rest of the time.